Hey guys, what's going on? Jeb here, and in today's video, we're going to be doing a little bit of technical analysis on Bitcoin and the cryptocurrency markets, and more specifically to start the video off here, I want to talk about this little rally that we've seen come out of Bitcoin here over the last couple of days, because just recently, Bitcoin set a temporary bottom just a little bit above $3,100. Perhaps that bottom will hold, perhaps it will be broken, but from there, we did see a nice little rally come out of Bitcoin up to recent highs of around $4,100. But over the last couple of hours, over the last 24 hours or so, we've seen a little bit of weakness come out of Bitcoin. As we can see here, Bitcoin has set a flat level of resistance here at around $4,100. $150. And considering Bitcoin has done so well over the last week, it does beg the question as to whether or not we're about to see some kind of retracement to follow this nice little bullish piece of price action that we've seen come out of Bitcoin here over the last few days. We're going to be discussing that in today's video and getting into the technical reasons why I believe we might be about to see a little bit of sideways trading action, if not a little bit of bearish price action. We're going to be discussing that at the start of the video, but on into the rest of the video, we also have some news that we want to talk about. And guys, this is a rather bullish piece of news that I'm very happy to see. There is a bill being proposed to the U.S. Congress by a couple of congressmen that would stop crypto assets from being declared securities which is a very big deal indeed. So in today's video, we're going to be discussing this piece of news, and I'm also going to be going over exactly what a security is and why you most certainly do not want your favorite cryptocurrency to be classified as a security. That would not be a good day. Anyway, we're going to be discussing all of that and more in today's video, guys. So if you enjoyed today's video, definitely consider dropping a like and hitting that subscribe button. Also, smash the notification bell and watch to the end because I think this is going to be a good one. So let's go ahead and get right into it. Bitcoin is currently, at the time of recording this anyway, trading just a little over $4,000. We did break resistance at $4,000 and we have been trading above it. But like I said, we did set this kind of pseudo double top down here on the hourly chart at around $4,125 to $4,150, depending on where you draw your level of resistance. That is significant because we don't want to see Bitcoin set a double top up here. We do not want to see Bitcoin do that and then come up here and set a triple top, for example. If Bitcoin comes back up here to $4,150 and we don't break it a third time, that would be very indicative of some new bearish price action coming over the next couple of hours on into the next 24 to 48 hours. We're going to be discussing that a little bit more in a little while, but I didn't have crypto market cap up, so you guys just saw my subscription feed. That is quite all right. Anyway, let's go ahead and get on to the coin market cap so we can do our crypto market update. I was totally not watching YouTube right before making this video. Anyway, now let's get into it. Bitcoin across all exchanges is trading just over $4,000 and it's down by about a quarter of a percent over the last 24 hours. Like I said, we've seen a lot of sideways trading over here on the over the last 24 hours or so. As we can see, Bitcoin trading sideways up here just above $4,000, definitely hitting that zone of resistance around $4,000 and definitely a lot of people taking profits after Bitcoin has finally seen some kind of bullish price action. The short sellers have been having an absolute blast over the last month, but now the bulls are starting to take some of their their profits, which is not exactly exact. That's not exactly what we want to see for the market, but it is nevertheless what seems to be happening. XRP is down by about half a percent. Ethereum's up six percent, and Bitcoin Cash is still up twenty-two percent on the day. Bitcoin Cash really came back in a very big way after it dropped down here to around eight or nine on Coin Market Cap, and has been doing rather well over the last couple of days. Now it's still very far retraced from all-time high. I believe it's still over ninety percent retraced from all-time high, but most cryptocurrencies are at the moment, so that's nothing really against Bitcoin Cash. If we sort by change over the last 24 hours, we're going to see Tron and Bitcoin Cash, two big names up here leading the market, up over 20%, respectively. Tron up over 25%. We can see on the seven-day price graphs that Tron has been having one heck of a day. Definitely a good day for Tron. If you guys are in tricks, you're probably enjoying yourself right now. But the rest of the market is also doing rather well. We see about 15 cryptocurrencies in the double-digit green. And if we scroll down here, we see the market's basically split, but the green that there is is definitely a lot deeper than the red that we're seeing, Quash and Stratus being the two double-digit losers on today's crypto market recap. Anyway, that's basically all we wanted to discuss here. One thing I did want to talk about is volume. Bitcoin has been seeing some really, really nice volume here over the last couple of days. A lot of people in the course, not in the course, excuse me, I'll talk about the course later. A lot of people in the comments have been asking me to talk about volume a lot more lately since volume is a very important indicator. So I'll go ahead and discuss that. One thing that I like to see is that Bitcoin has seen a lot, and I I do mean a lot of volume come in here over the last four days on these green candlesticks, which is a very good thing to see indeed, because what you do not want to see in a market is a low liquidity to to match with your low volatility. As we could see over here, when Bitcoin was trading sideways in this region over here, we saw extraordinarily low volume, and that's never a healthy thing for the market, because when you see very low volume, it makes it much, much easier for a whale or for perhaps some institution to come in and manipulate the market and move the market however they see fit. So it's a very good thing to see a lot of volume to match very thick 
order books. We want a thick order book with two C's. And we also want to see a lot of volatility in Bitcoin so that we can start driving those three things, high volatility, uh, large order books, thick order books, and uh, a high volatility and high volume, excuse me, up so that if we see those three things increasing, that is typically a very bullish sign that could help propel Bitcoin even higher. So I do like to see that Bitcoin's volume is doing quite well. 20, uh, excuse me, 24 hour volume is doing rather well, sitting around $26 billion. That is definitely a good amount of volume for Bitcoin and the cryptocurrency markets, considering the price action that we're seeing. If you were to make a ratio between Bitcoin's price and Bitcoin's volume, that ratio is looking pretty good right about now. Anyway, I believe that's all we wanted to cover on CoinMarketCap. We do have a lot to get to, so let's go ahead and get to what I wanted to talk about here on the Bitcoin chart. A couple of the things I wanted to, to discuss are the levels of resistance. Now, if you watch yesterday's video, then I did talk about the levels of resistance that I was looking at for Bitcoin. $4,000, $5,000, of course, being examples of that, but there's a few others that I wanted to point out, one of which I did also talk about in that video being the 50 daily simple moving average, which is currently curving down and sitting around $4,500. Watch out for that one, but there is a level of resistance that I'm not really going to define definitively call a level of resistance, but I do want to ask you guys' opinion on this because this looks rather interesting. I was looking for Fibonacci levels of resistance as Bitcoin continues to retrace in the bullish direction here over the last couple of days, and the only one I was able to find is if you pull Fibonacci from over here right down to our recent low, and as you can see, if you pull these lows right here, Bitcoin is currently getting resistance on the 26 point, uh, excuse me, the 23.6% Fibonacci retracement level. Now, I would prefer to put Fibonacci right over here at the beginning of this little downtrend, but to be fair, Bitcoin had been trading sideways here. This is the top of the previous rally over here. So where would you guys put that? Where would you guys uh, define that level of resistance with Fibonacci? Would you guys prefer to have it there or would you prefer to have it there? In my opinion, what it seems like is that both of these are very valid levels of support and resistance because they are two completely different uh, places that you can put the Fibonacci, the beginning of the Fibonacci retracement tool. I'm a very big fan of the Fibonacci retracement tool, but when the market it hasn't really been in this whole uh, bull and bear rallies uh, cycle as it, as it had been for the beginning of 2018. It makes it a little harder to figure out where you want to put your Fibonacci levels. That is where I would probably put mine is back over here at the top of this rally since it has basically been all downhill from there with a gradual downtrend. Anyway, I do think that that's perhaps one level that we're seeing uh, give us resistance is that 23.6% Fibonacci level kind of uh, aligning with the two thousand with the, excuse me the four thousand dollar level for Bitcoin. Watch out for that. But one of the major things I also wanted to discuss was the fact that Bitcoin has been crashing so hard lately. The bears have taken so much more control. The bears definitely surprised me a little bit when they were able to push Bitcoin this far, this quickly. Actually, I take that back. That didn't surprise me because I had always said that I believe Bitcoin would pull back to around three to $4,000 if we broke $6,000. I retract that. But my point stands that the bears have been very strong here over the last couple of days, over the last couple of weeks, excuse me, really the last month and a half or so after we broke $6,000. It's all been downhill from there. And the bulls have started to get a little bit of their momentum back. Now, with that said, the bulls are going to not be as strong as the bears, else we wouldn't be in a bear market anymore. So you have to understand that for the bulls to push us up 30% in the span of just four days, that's going to be exhausting for the bulls. And a lot of the bulls are probably not going to want to buy up here at $4,000 when we were just 30% lower, or actually not even 30% lower, down here at around $3,000. I'd like to see that the, I'd like, what I'd, think is probably going to happen here, guys. We're going to see some kind of small retracement. Bitcoin may just trade sideways here on $4,000 for a little while, but I don't think we're necessarily just going to continue this moonshot just yet. And if we do, it's very possible that we do. But if we do, I don't necessarily think that's what's most healthy for Bitcoin. One thing I also want to discuss is the rule of three. I don't talk about this a lot on the channel, but when you're doing your technical analysis and when you are looking in nature or in markets or in just about anything, you see the number three pop up a lot. You got your triangle right here. You have the uh, you have the X-Files theme play whenever this shape shows up on a video. But my point is here, the rule of three tends to be very helpful for when you're doing technical analysis. Now, if you guys haven't heard the rule of three before, that's because that is my term for it. But what you see markets do a lot is that they tend to move in cyclical patterns of three. So what we've seen here over the last couple of days in this little bullish piece of price action right here, Bitcoin has set three highs. We saw a high right here, which was broken for this high, which was broken for this high. We've seen three highs, and a lot of times what you'll see is a market will move in cycles of three whenever it's moving in this kind of um, cyclical pattern as Bitcoin's moving in this bull cycle. It has little mini cycles of bullishness, bearishness, bullishness, bearishness, bullishness, bearishness. And that's one of the things I like to see is that when a market moves and does the same thing three times, a lot of times that indicates that you're probably about to see some kind of retracement. That kind of ties into Elliott Wave Theory, but I'm not going there in this video. Watch out for that because we have seen three highs, we have seen three lows, and a lot of times you will see something like that form before you see a small retracement. Overall, 
it does seem that Bitcoin is looking more bullish than bearish on the medium term. And by the medium term, I mean for the next week to two weeks. But on the next couple of days, it looks like Bitcoin may be about to see some kind of retracement. As we can see down here, MACD is still very, very bullish. I still think this rally is in full swing, but we are probably are going to see some kind of retracement, perhaps resetting the, uh, the stochastic RSI and RSI a little bit, pulling Bitcoin back down to more reasonable levels for the time being, maybe around $3,800 to $3,700 before we continue moving in the northerly direction. Tell me what you guys think about that technical analysis in the comments section down below. And if you guys want to learn how to do technical analysis, I do highly recommend the Cryptocurrency Technical Analysis Academy. In the description down below is a discount code for 20% off on that. But let's go ahead and keep going on into the video and talk about this news with this bill being proposed to the U.S. Congress. Now, this is a big deal. I don't want to overshadow, I don't want to overplay this because this bill hasn't gone through yet, but this does have the potential to be very, very important because as we'll discuss later, the last thing that the cryptocurrency space needs is for a cryptocurrency, especially a major one like Bitcoin, Ethereum, or especially XRP, to be labeled as a security because that would not exactly be the right precedent for what we're trying to do. And when you guys have to, and when you guys are uh, looking into civics and government, what you have to understand is that precedent means a lot. And if one cryptocurrency gets labeled as a security, that sets the precedent for another cryptocurrency to be labeled as a security. And if any cryptocurrency in the top 10 is likely to be labeled as a, as a security, it's XRP. Now, since XRP and Ripple Foundation, or not Ripple Foundation, but Ripple are a, a centralized company, if you will. I'm not really attacking Ripple here or XRP here. I'm just saying since they're a little bit more centralized, it wouldn't be the end of the world for XRP to be labeled a security. But if a cryptocurrency gets labeled a security, it makes it much easier for another cryptocurrency such as Ethereum which whose case for being a security isn't as strong as XRP's it makes that case a little bit stronger that Ethereum could perhaps be labeled a security. And then if Ethereum gets labeled a security, maybe Bitcoin's next, maybe Stellar's next, maybe EOS is next. That's a big one that might happen. So you have to watch out for that. We don't want a single cryptocurrency to be labeled a security because if that happens, you're not going to want to see what happens next because the government is probably going to take that and it's going to run with it because what do we all know about the government? We know that the number one rule of government is that they like to steal your money and they like to give it to other people. No, of course I'm joking only half joking, but the one thing that the government does like to do is it likes to regulate things. So if the government starts regulating cryptocurrencies, it very well may not stop. That's definitely a slippery slope, but slippery slope isn't always a fallacy. Anyway, let's go ahead and get on into this news. Since Bitcoin was formerly classified as a pseudo commodity, crypto investors have been pestering regulators, namely the United States Securities and Exchanges Commission, about how their favorite cryptocurrencies stack up. Ethereum in its current uh, decentralized state was hinted at being in the same boat as Bitcoin. That's been hinted quite a few times that Ethereum is not, in fact, a security. But for a majority of other cryptocurrencies, prim uh, primarily those issued via initial coin offerings, pundits have hinted that they can be classified as securities. And we'll be talking about why they may be classified as securities later. But for the time being, understand that many cryptocurrencies definitely fall somewhat, not exactly very well, but they do fall somewhat under the Howey test and they do somewhat fall into the category of securities. And there could be an argument that many cryptocurrencies could be labeled as securities, even though the label of security isn't really well tailored for the cryptocurrency industry because we're looking at an entirely new market. Anyway, Securities and Exchange Commission Jay Clayton, for example, recently took to CNBC and Coindesk's Consensus Invest Conference to state that ICOs can be an effective way to build war chests. Such efforts should adhere to traditional securities law. And of course, war chests have to do with the election of politicians. This de facto classification has led to the tumult of the token subset as many apparent. We're going to skip ahead a little bit because this is a bunch of legal jargon that is not important to my point. But we do want to talk about this. Yet an exclusive report from CNBC's Kate Rooney indicates that on Thursday, two American congressmen have introduced a bill that would turn regulatory tide in favor of in in crypto's favor excuse me i can read per rooney the so the so-called token taxonomy act he, uh, headed by Warren Davidson of Ohio and Darren Soto of Florida, will disallow the SEC from classifying fully-fledged digital token assets as securities. This is a very big development. I'm not going to read into the rest of this article. If you do want to find this article, I recommend joining the Discord server in the link down below. Go to the Auto News tab, and this will show up there. We have a bot that automatically posts news, and this is where I found this article, and this is where I found this news just after I woke up this morning. Definitely an interesting piece of news. And I would like to see this bill go through, but at the same time, the government isn't really fond of of making regulations that stop the government from making regulations. The government doesn't really like to burn bridges for itself in the future when it could regulate a cryptocurrency in a certain way. The government, a lot of times, will leave that 
ability on the table if it wants to do it in the future. So what I'm saying here is that I'm not totally convinced that this bill is going to go through. And as we can see down here, and while uh, cynics uh, uh, while cynics are skeptical skeptical that the act will succeed, a lot of people are indeed skeptical that this will succeed. It would be a very good thing if it did, because of course we don't want to see Bitcoin or another cryptocurrency be labeled as a security. But that leads us to the question, what exactly is a security? A lot of people in the cryptocurrency space talk about securities. They talk about cryptocurrencies being turned into securities and uh, are being labeled as securities, or excuse me, and the government uh, regulating them as such and exchanges being shut down and told to comply and everything. And it just seems like a doomsday scenario for the cryptocurrency space. So I want to pull back the mask and talk about what a label for security would actually mean and also talk about what securities actually are and why it's important that cryptocurrencies do not be labeled securities and why they're really not securities in the first place. So I'm going to be reading from this article here. If you type this into Google, you will find this article. I do highly recommend you read through this for your own research, but I'm going to be uh, skimming over it to make my points here in today's video. It's every crypto asset investor's worst nightmare. We wake up in the morning and read that the SEC and other regulators are seeking to immediately shut down crypto exchanges and projects for operating outside existing legal frameworks, given zero times to a just to entire market dumps, taking a generation of tech innovation and our investments with it. Now, of course, that is what a lot of people are concerned about, but it's unlikely that that would happen. That is one thing that the government could do. The government could just say, okay, well, all of you exchanges are trading a bunch of securities that you're not being regulated, that are not being regulated. You're not working with inside the legal framework. You're not doing this, what you're supposed to be, uh, what you're supposed to be doing. You have 24 hours to comply or you are now not in business anymore. So that's one thing that we don't want to see happen. That is one thing that the government could do. However, it is unlikely. Now, we're going to talk about what a security is here. One thing, one way that many people, including the SEC, define a security is under something called the Howey Test. The, the SEC has a broad definition for the term security. Under law, a security includes many familiar asset in uh, instruments such as notes, stocks, bonds, and investment contracts. For our purposes, we'll focus on investment contracts. What is an investment contract? Well, the author here is glad that you asked. In the SEC, in SEC versus Howey, a Supreme Court case, an investment contract under the Howey Test, which as it is now defined, was defined as an investment of money where there is an expectation of profits from an investment, an investment in of money in a common enterprise, and any profit comes from the effort of a promoter or third party. Now, what you would normally see follow this would be something like a stock, for example, or a bond, for example, like they, like was listed up here. Now, cryptocurrencies don't really fall very well into that because many cryptocurrencies, the, the entire point of the cryptocurrency is to be decentralized, which means number three is normally out, but not always, such as in the case of Ethereum and Ripple, and any profit coming from the efforts of a promoter of a third party doesn't necessarily comply with many cryptocurrencies while it does comply with something like XRP, perhaps because there is a centralized backer to something like XRP. Anyway, let's go ahead and look down here at how we label the top three cryptocurrencies, Bitcoin, Ethereum, and XRP. We can see here that uh, our author here, Andrew Elliott, all credit to Andrew Elliott for writing this, of course, made a little uh, a little graphic here to display this. Is Bitcoin an investment of money? Of course it is. We do invest in Bitcoin to get money back. Is there an investment of profits from the, is there an expectation of profits from the investment? Yes, of course, that does fit. So these two things, almost all cryptocurrencies fall into this subset and this category right here. Investment of money is in a common enterprise. Now, what this has to do with is that there's a company, for example, behind this. For example, if you're investing in Apple stock, the company behind that would be, uh, well, Apple. If you're investing in Amazon stock, the company behind that would be Amazon. So watch out for that. If you see a cryptocurrency that falls into this up into this, then you have to be very careful. This is where the ICO argument comes into play. A lot of people saying that ICOs, for example, could be labeled as securities, partially because they are they, they are basically an investment in a common enterprise, such as, I don't know, BitConnect. BitConnect, I don't think had an ICO. I don't remember. I, what, I don't recall. But BitConnect, for example, may have fallen into this because there's an investment in a con common enterprise, namely BitConnect and any profits coming from the efforts of a promoter or third party. Now, XRP is being promoted by Ripple, so XRP does fall into this category, which is one of the reasons why people have been very concerned as of the last six months or so that XRP very well may be labeled a security, so be very careful of that as well. It's kind of hard to define this, which is probably one of the reasons that the cryptocurrency community and the SEC haven't really come to an agreement on what is a security and what is not, and there hasn't really been a consensus on whether or not Bitcoin or other cryptocurrencies are. But I think one of the reasons that we also haven't seen a lot of development in this field is the fact that cryptocurrencies are still so very new. And as I forget who, who said it, but someone so eloquently put, the government is like a very, very large ship with a very, very small rotor. It can go very quickly and in a, it can go very quickly in one direction with a lot of force. 
but it takes a while for it to start moving in that direction. And it does seem that the cryptocurrency market is starting to be the center of attention for the crypt for the government, especially back in 2017. But I think it's going to take another bull market before we start seeing a lot of these things come into play. And that's why this bill is so important, because what I would like to see happen here is for this bill to get passed before the SEC and other crypt and other regulators, potential cryptocurrency regulators, perhaps like the CFTC, start getting into the market and start trying to regulate cryptocurrency markets. Because if we have this bill to protect us by then, then they're not going to be able to go and very easily repeal repeal a bill that is stopping them from regulating Bitcoin as a cryptocurrency, or, or excuse me, regulating Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies as securities. Now, perhaps they will introduce some other kind of framework for cryptocurrencies and how they ought to be regulated in the future. But that would at least give us a little wiggle room, perhaps allowing Bitcoin to run even farther in the next bull run. Now, let's go ahead and talk about why people are so concerned about why uh, about cryptocurrencies being labeled as securities, because this is not the end of the world, guys. If Bitcoin or cryptocurrency gets labeled as a security, it's not the end of cryptocurrency. It's not the end of Bitcoin. It does just kind of throw a whole spanner in the idea of cryptocurrency because the entire point is to be decentralized, which kind of flies in the face of number three and four here in the Howey test. Anyway, reconciling the crypto asset class to compliance requirements. As, previous, as previously stated, crypto assets aren't a perfect fit into existing regulatory frameworks because we've never really seen a, a system like the cryptocurrency market uh, evolve before and certainly not get anywhere near as big as it has over the last two or three years. Because of this mismatch, we at CoinSavage, we are on CoinSavage.com right now, all credit to them for this article once again, see three possible scenarios playing out. The SEC and other regulators demand immediate compliance by crypto exchanges and projects into existing law. This is a nightmare scenario. We've not heard any regulators pushing this course of action. We haven't really heard any regulators pushing for very much of any course of action because the regulators haven't really taken too much interest in cryptocurrencies. The SEC has been dragging its feet to approve or disapprove a Bitcoin ETF such as the Van Eck one, which seems to be a very, very good Bitcoin ETF proposal, which doesn't really seem to have a lot of flaws with it that the SEC could exploit to deny if the SEC wanted to actually deny the, S the uh, ETF. It doesn't seem the regulators are taking a ton of interest in Bitcoin in the cryptocurrency space yet. Another scenario that Coin Savage sees is that all cryptos must register, but registration is easy and regulators pursue a light touch to encourage continued innovation. I see kind of a 1.5 in here where the SEC cracks down on cryptocurrencies and they want cryptocurrencies and the companies perhaps behind ICOs and behind projects like Ethereum and XRP to register quite a bit quicker, but they're not going to just crack down on it and just ban cryptocurrencies or anything. There's really a lot of different ways the government can approach regulating this because we're in a new we're in new territory and the government can kind of just make up rules as it goes. And and no one can really stop them if they're the ones making the rules. So you have to be careful about this. And we have to be we have to tread lightly when we're talking about this subject. Not when we're talking about this subject, but when the cryptocurrency market is approaching the subject. Anyway, guys, I think we've talked about this enough. I think you guys understand what's going on. This bill is being proposed. There's no clear date on when it will be voted on yet. But it would be very nice to see this pass. If I were to give you my opinion on whether or not this will pass... I'm not convinced this is going to pass very easily just because of the way the government works and the U.S. government does like to regulate things. Every government does. That's not just the United States. And the government stopping itself from regulating something in the future a certain way doesn't really seem like the way the government would go. But we will see. Time will tell. We will see what happens. I should have told them to regulate Bitcoin. Uh, I should have told them not to regulate Bitcoin while I was in D.C. I made that mistake. I should have walked up to Donald Trump and said, hey, Bitcoin's off the table. I should have done that. I probably would have gotten shot. Anyway, I think that's basically going to do it for this video, guys. I do want to go ahead and talk about the Cryptocurrency Technical Analysis Academy here at the end of the video, because like I mentioned earlier, we are running a um, we are running a deal right now. There's a 20% off discount code in the description down below. Christmas 2018, all caps, no spaces. You will get 20% off the Cryptocurrency Technical Analysis Academy. If you didn't see yesterday's video, I want to go ahead and go over what we have to offer here. There are 20 videos with over five and a half hours of content in the course. Every single one of them delivered what I consider to be very, very valuable knowledge that every single cryptocurrency trader, investor, and technical analyst ought to know. Now, of course, several of these videos are directed at the beginners. We do have some videos talking about how to set up TradingView and Binance. Both of these are extensive videos that go over much of the interface and will definitely get you off your feet when you're trying to learn these otherwise somewhat confusing programs such as TradingView and Binance. They're very complicated, but they are also very easy to understand once you actually know what you're doing. We also cover things such as support and resistance, how to read candlestick charts, and how to read Heiken Ashi charts, but those are the beginner things, but we do have some more intermediate and advanced concepts down here, such as how to plan and execute profitable trades. This is definitely one of my favorite videos in the entire course. It's about 26 minute, minutes long, and I go over three different examples where I talk about how to actually go about planning trades, how to get into trades, how to know when to get out of trades, and how to spot trades from 
from a mile away so you guys know what trades to be taking and what trades not to be taking. We also talk about mass psychology, very important part of understanding markets because as I've said in the past, a market is simply the manifestation of the psychology of the masses who are trading and investing in that market. Very important that you understand mass psychology. We have a video on that. We have a lot of videos in here, guys. I poured my heart and soul into this and everyone who's joined the course so far has given me nothing but positive feedback. We have, well, we have had a few pieces of constructive criticism. For example, someone wanted this video right here, how to plan and execute profitable trades, which I went ahead and made this video for them because it was such a good idea. Anyway, guys, if you check the description down below, you hit that link, you can come and see what all these videos have to offer and you can see what we have to offer here in the course. I do think it's a good product, guys. I'll be real with you. I wouldn't be selling if if I didn't think it was a good product. I'm not going to try and pull that on you guys. I think it is a good product, and I think you guys would get a lot of value out of it, especially considering there's a deal going on. So definitely consider jumping in the course, and I'll be seeing you guys in there, and I'll also be seeing you guys in the next video. I do want to thank each and every single one of you for watching, as always, and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.